So, um, now as far as all the good things we talked about that tracks can bring to the table, there are certainly some things that are not so good to, about them. Number one, you're very, very restricted to what that track is. You can't change things such as form. You can't change things such as key. You can't change mm. things such as harmony. What's there is there. Take another solo. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, right. I know one of the bands I play with, if people start dancing, then they'll be like, oh, we're going to ride this out longer. Sure. And you can't do that. Or, you know, if you're playing on a club gig, for example, I mean, like, I, I thought that uh, most bands that did this were either professional artists who use backing tracks, which I think we should definitely get into, um, <clears throat> or... Like the wedding scene, but when I saw it at Xfinity Live, but there's a cover band on the stage, I'm like, they're playing the tracks. I can tell. I can hear it. That's a synth. That's not there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, in order to get all that stuff happening, there's one keyboard player. I'm watching his hands. He's not even playing right now, and I hear, you know, so like, <laughs> <laughs> like they're playing the tracks. So, um, when you're in that situation, I mean, one of the bands that I play in doesn't use any tracks at all, and it's actually really nice because. You have a lot of freedom. If you want to all of a sudden throw in, for the example, for the sake of the argument, some Afro-Cuban thing somewhere as like a, hey, check this out. You can do that. You can't do that if, a, if you have a drum track going on behind you that you're playing along to. Yeah. Um, if you need, oh, geez, um, we're finishing our set and we're five minutes short. Solo. <laughs> you know, it was an easy way to extend a song. You get to the end of the song, and all of a sudden the lead guitar plays the melody the chorus wants through, takes a little bit of a solo, mm -hmm. and then brings the chorus back in, and you just added a minute and a half to your song. Sometimes you, sometimes you got to do that. That's pretty much what we do on our duo gigs. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, it's time. almost nine. Yeah, it's like uh, take another chorus, and you can do that. You know, yeah. you can do a situation, or you you have the freedom to be like, you know, this crowd. I you know I could look at the drummer in that band. Get to the end of the course, I'm like, and they know they bring it real small, and I can and I have some solo space, or we can t you can dance it off to my bass player, let him do some stuff like that, and you can't do that with the track, not at all. You're locked into the way the track sounds. Eh. Um, another thing is dealing with the thought process of are you cheating? <laughs> is this cheating? <laughs> uh, uh, there's going to be probably more than a few comments if we ever get comments saying that you're a big cheater. Well, you know. Jeff Rawson's a big cheater. You let's, heard it here, well, right here first. Let's, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Okay. If all the pros are doing it, which most of them are, I've been there, I've seen it happen, am I cheating? Now, these lines get gray. You know, like, it, it, it sometimes, I mean, I do a decent bit of work for Live Nation where they will book acts for, like, the VIP club of different concerts. Mm -hmm. And I remember doing that for the Backstreet Boys. So I'm like, well, I'm here. I might as well see the concert. I was actually kind of looking forward to it. Not because I'm a Backstreet Boys fan. Because I'm like, these guys have been around a long time. They're probably going to have a slamming band. And it'll probably be a heck of a show. So, <laughs> the okay, side. Waiting for it. Well, you know, I was quite disappointed with what I saw on the concert. Not because the music is not my thing, which is not really my thing. But let's, you know, a catchy song a catchy song. That's fine. But, you know, it was the same... Five guys on stage dancing, doing the same shtick they did 15 years ago in front of an audience. It was just kind of like weird. Completely to backing tracks, no band at all, nothing. And the thing that bothered me a lot is I could tell very easily that even their lead vocals were on these tracks. And it's like, okay, when you say, show me the meaning of being lonely in that acapella intro, and three of the four guys have their mics on their side, <laughs> I'm like... Let alone the sound changed instantly to this uber compressed studio rendition through probably some yeah. nice Neumann mics. I'm like, okay, and that's all. You're, you're not going into your, you know, Beta 58 or whatever it is you're using at the time. And of course, that's always the argument of uh, with uh, groups that do a lot of dancing, a lot of movement, where it's like, well, but they're dancing and moving, and it's like, eh. well, you know, and it, and it does seem even if we remember the uh, the Ashley Simpson thing. <clears throat> it, the argument of like, oh no, it's a backing track versus it's a Milli Vanilli lip sync, and 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 I feel like that's that's how a lot of artists kind of yeah. get away with it. Oh, it's a backing track, but how much backing track is it? And so it's it, at what point does it become? Are you even an artist? I mean, Red Hot Chili Peppers got a lot of flack from the other day when they did the Super Bowl. Remember yeah. that? Oh yeah, and yeah, they didn't even have their that. guitars plugged in, and like there was an uproar, and then they released a statement, which I think they handled pretty well, expressing that you know it was in order for them to even get the gig, yeah. they had to agree to do that, and they're like, well, who would pass up that opportunity, you know? Um, so, is it cheating? Well, is Photoshop cheating on pictures? 
You know, like yeah. it, it, it's really it gets really gray. It's it's hard to define. Now. Well, I mean, even think about the the concept of a keyboard player. Yeah, you know, if that, that's not a piano sound. You know, if they're doing the the hits, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, like the horn hits, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it's like, well, that's not a horn section. Nope. And then and then it's like, well, what's you're just one step away from having a sequenced horn track. Right. You know what? That's uh, that's something I didn't even think about as far as the benefit. You know how many hours of keyboard programming you save by putting a track on? Yeah. <laughs> keyboard players across America. Well, thank you for that track. Not that they can do it, but you know how many hours it takes to program a show, especially when you have a, like the band that I use with a lot of tracks. We don't have set lists, so we call everything on the fly. Hmm. Can you imagine how much? Well, and then taking, uh, ta being able to take requests. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. Which, yeah. which I think is you know pretty. Well, now let, let me ask you a question. How many in your uh, in your wedding group? How many songs do you have on the Ooh. theoretical playlist? A couple hundred. I mean. Our repertoire has got easily well over two, maybe even more than 300 songs by now. So, like, how many of those, because I'm just thinking in terms of, like, special requests and things like that. Although you guys probably end up having a playlist where it's like... Well, I mean, that band, in the contracts that we signed with that band, we guarantee you three songs of your choice, whatever they may be. So you can have your specific first dance, and and then we just show oh, okay. you whatever. And that makes sense. So you'll, you'll work up whatever. Yeah, right. You know, so if you want to, like, for one time we had a... Um, what, what if I did like a dream theater song? We've had stuff like Bob O'Reilly. Um, we've had stuff like Red Hot Chili Peppers stuff that's like, oh, this is interesting. And um, we've, so if I, like Dance of Eternity. If it's possible, I mean, I'm gonna say you're allowed up to three songs. Um, It'd be pretty funny. Just I, I would have a blast playing it. <laughs> so, <laughs> it would be a good time. Um, I might be like, we're really. I mean, but I, I, you'd be surprised some of the requests we get. So uh, let's um, let's move it to it. So if you're a um, if you're a cover band, and I, I feel one of the most popular ones is uh, uh, any one that does a lot of 80s stuff that wants to cover jump and doesn't have a keyboardist. Okay, needs that. I mean, I, I've heard most. You know, most uh, like cover bands will do that because if you don't have that line. You have a you're, C you're, pedal. You're, yeah. yeah you're, <laughs> you know, you're just, you know, you're missing, missing so much out. But uh, so if you're like a cover band, how would you go about saying, okay, we're going to, what, um, what sort of gear do you need with making, making this happen? Well, that's, well, I mean, okay. A lot, apparently. Yeah. Well, it, it could what, be What sort simple. of investment? Let, let's say I've got a I've got a five piece group. It's you know a guitarist and a keyboardist and you know uh, two vocalists and the bass player drummer. There are lots of ways to do this. <clears throat> My band has a DJ in it mm -hmm. where he has all the tracks on there that he can queue up. They're all sequences. Um, whenever we do something that's not live, he queues up a sequence three, four. He he's even good about counting us in, which is really actually kind of nice. Mm -hmm. And um, other bands that I know use tracks have a, like a laptop next to them mm -hmm. that someone in the band will cue. Might be the drummer, might be a singer. I think a singer's a little easier. I've been in situations where the drummer's doing it and it's kind of hard to do the keyboard dance. Just hit it with your yeah. sticks. You get, well, that's another <laughs> thing too. I've, I've been in bands where we have these tracks where the drummer had it on like a pad. You could cue it with a pad. Oh, okay. Um, some bands I've seen will actually take their entire set. And I think they had one. I think they had one discontinuous track, for like set two. I can see that with with all the interludes and the hey, how all you the doing transitions tonight? made. <laughs> right, they didn't even do any of that talking. Like there was, there really wasn't any of that. Yeah. Every song pretty much segued into the other one to some degree, or a relatively simple ending. And I, th I think, um, it was just a simple track for like a forty-five minute set or so that yeah. they hit play. Now, you got to make that. Yeah, I mean, it's not. It's it, you got. It does take some time up front. It's not like it's they come out of. The so would track you just vacuum. all edit that in GarageBand? Pro Tools, Pro, GarageBand. Oh. I mean, there's a number. You can do it in lots of different programs. Could you do it in Audacity? If you hey, when there's a will, there's a way. I mean, <laughs> probably. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't want to. But if I had to do it, I'm sure I could make it work. It seems on the internet that people really like Audacity, and I've tried to use it. I just go, this is... Well, I mean, is... it's free. Well, I, under... well, I understand I, that. It is free, so there you yeah. go. <laughs> you know, I've done some things on Audacity that are actually really simple. Uh, and then I've done some things where I'm like, screw this, where's Pro Tools? <laughs> mm. All right, so, I mean, I think that's that, that sort of gives us a world into uh, backing tracks. Well, you know, not everyone is using them, of course. Mm-hmm. 
Um, not everyone should, but I'm surprised that a lot of people are these days. Um, is it cheating? Sometimes maybe, sometimes not. Like if you can't play at all without them, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> but if you're using it to supplement enhance, is it necessarily wrong? Well, like I said, like if Photoshop has become the standard on all pictures you see now, so I think it's moving that direction in music. Now, is that good or bad? Well. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of appreciate when I see someone performing on TV. I'm like, oh, that was pitchy. I know they're actually singing. You know, like, well, there is no, there is something, uh, something refreshing about a mistake. Sure. Go, oh, look. You know, I'm it's actually, like I think oh, a lot was... of it is just what your end product, what you want that to be. Do you want perfection, and do you want guaranteed perfection, right. or do you want something more acoustic, more raw? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, you know, I was, I went, I did a, the Live Nation thing for J. J. Cole actually, which I mentioned before. Um, a lot of rappers are pretty much them and a DJ. Um, Little Wayne one time, he had he had a DJ, he had a guitarist and a bass player with him, which actually gave a lot of energy. So it was like a DJ, and then this dude was kind of like ripping on it, on the tracks, and actually, it, it actually sounded really cool. I'm not really normally a, a big rap fan, but I actually really enjoyed that concert. But J. Cole, pretty much, he had a band with him, and it was really refreshing. Um, I don't know if there were tracks on there. If they were there, they were fairly minimal. I could see the background singers. I could hear the inflections and see, like they were singing, and they were actually performing without a track, and it was really refreshing to hear. I think it does sound a little bit different. Mixing with a track can be a little tricky, especially if you're a guitarist trying to cut through a mix and you're trying to cut through already studio laid down guitars. Oh, that's true. That's some work to do for your sound guy to try to hollow out a frequency for you to fit through and cut. That can be tricky sometimes. Um, so. I think depending upon the situation, I mean, obviously I use them, <laughs> you know, mm. um, and I think they can be beneficial. I think they can be a crutch for people who aren't good enough to do without it. <laughs> you know? There has to be a small subset of drummers, though, that can't play to them. And you know what I'm talking like that, that like entry level, like, hey, <clears throat> a guy in his basement that can't play. I mean, I, I think we've probably all met people that couldn't play with click tracks. That probably couldn't handle playing to those without significant amount of practice. Practice to a metronome, drummers. Yeah, well, I mean, if... It's not like you want good time or anything. <clears throat> you know how many people are... It's not are... like it's your only job. <laughs> you know, you know, you know how many people... Job, but... You know how many people are, as like, seriously argue that, like, metronomes kill drummers' feels and they shouldn't practice to them? All the feels. I don't. I don't. Lots believe. of feelings behind those. Those people, those people are often musicians. If you honestly think that practicing to a metronome isn't going to... Uh, it, it, that it's not going to help you in some way by strengthening your time. It's it's you're you're whack, you're wrong. Well, that's almost like when I hear people try, people try to say that perfect pitch can be a detriment. It's like it's a tool. You can choose whether or not to use it. <laughs> like if you have good time because you practice a lot with a metronome, you can decide when and when not to yeah. change that time. Mm. If you don't have that kind of control, yeah. <laughs> right. Do you have any Do you have anything else to say about backing tracks before um, we wrap it up? I think we pretty much covered most of uh, what we're talking about. I mean, I don't think they should be vilified. I think they should be seen for what they are. Yeah.